but he wants to stay on the reservation. There are definitely people that, that want to get up, and there, there's a great movie you can give from our library, the Service Learning Library, or from the Dayton Memorial Library. It's called Chiefs, and uh, it's a documentary about the basketball team. Basketball is huge there. I mean, and, um, and um, one of the kids says in, in the movie, I view basketball as my way off the reservation. So I think that there are some people that want, I think, I think you know, I, I think in a lot of ways it's similar to if you were to talk to kids outside of the reservation. Some kids want to stay close to their family and, and in their communities, and some of them are ready to go off and explore. But I think a lot of kids also end up coming back for those reasons that um, everybody talked about here is that connection to family and community. So, and yeah, they did win back-to-back -back championships this year. And uh, it's interesting that the the high school, it's really small high school, has to compete with some pretty big schools and. The documentary Chiefs does a great job of showing the kind of um, prejudice, racism that they that these kids have to go through when they go and visit other schools. So it's it's a great documentary if you get a chance to check it out. I think, and on, on that on that line, or along those same lines, is you know in the metro area we can <clears throat> we can fail to recognize the extreme um, racism that takes place in these other communities, Montana. Wyoming, Idaho, Utah, even Maine, which has a very large Indian population. It's, um, it's, it's shockingly racist, and it shocks me to this day. If you're interested in more cultural connections, if they have a huge powwow in Denver every single year, um, when, when does anybody March, know? It's in, March. it's in March, so um, it's a, a great opportunity to kind of take in, uh, <laughs> take in culture. We also host a powwow on campus every year in May. We just did um, May 15th, so we host the Spring Bear Pow Wow, much smaller than the Large March Pow Wow, but still about 500 people come through a day. Okay. Other questions? I, <laughs> um, for the, the participants, how did your experience at Wind River um, or did it change your views of the world outside the reservation, especially with regards to some of the issues that folks were dealing with on the res? I'm sure. I, I reflect upon my life and what, what goes on with it. Um, I went over this a lot. Um, I think that it made me very, it humbled me in a lot of ways, and it made me very um, grateful and happy for the people I have in my life and the supportive family I have. And not to say that they weren't supportive family, like they said, family is huge, but there were just a lot of issues there. And it also just made me realize like what's important, you know, because these people are really living on like, the bare essentials that you need for life, and they're still happy kids, and still still having great relationships between each other and their families, and it just made me realize what. Well, I would say for me, um, when we think of minorities in the United States, African Americans and the Hispanics that come to mind, I think that the Native American population is often a forgotten minority in the United States. And so being there and seeing that and realizing that these people are, you know, they were here before us and what has happened to them over the course of the years and how they have kind of been pushed aside and forgotten and their living conditions, you know, being students here at Regis University, I would say that probably none of us come from that kind of a background. And so it is important just to realize that these people are there and they do need support and advocacy is probably the next place we need to go. But you know, they just are the forgotten minority. So it's just important to realize that they're here and they need some help too. So. I think that the issue uh, for me was that looking at the generational poverty and looking at other cultures, uh, that, that experience that. I'm from the Detroit area, and uh, certainly it, it just seeing the struggles of generational poverty in the microcosm on the reservation then uh, just caused me to, to really reflect on, on other issues. In fact, I heard a story on the radio the other day about a um, gal who had uh, was employed by a um, temporary agency and ended up getting a job but didn't have uh, enough gas in her car to be able to go to the job, and so couldn't take the job in order to get the money. And uh, certainly, how somebody you know reached out and 
met her and you know got gas in her car so she could go do that. But you know we don't really think about now. I don't didn't really think about those kinds of issues of uh, if your car doesn't work you can't get to work. You know and, and various things like that. That's what was helpful for me in sort of extrapolating to, to my world and things that are that are closer. Yeah, I have two kids, um, and I'm just thankful for all the opportunities that we have to give them um, for the potential future and the issues they don't have to fight with. And I think today our kids have so much to deal with, and then you go and see how it's compounded incrementally on the reservation. And so I, I feel fortunate, and I recognize that, which is, I guess that's what I thought a lot about. Any other questions or comments? Thank you so much for joining us and hearing our story today.